Hello, welcome to the nervous system. All right, so got a couple of things that you need to know about the nervous system in general. That is the, it is the master controlling and communicating system of the body. That's where all the, uh, the thinky and sensing parts are. It's all part of the nervous system. The three main functions, uh, I guess the, the, the grown up words, if you wanna use those, uh, you've got sensory input, it's monitoring stimuli. Uh, that's anything from, from vision to touch to equilibrium, anything like that. That's all sensory input. Integration, that's the interpretation of that sensory input. Right? And then you have the motor output, that's the response to stimuli. That's uh, the actual movements that you create as a response to any of the sensory input. The organization of the nervous system, the two main parts that we're going to talk about is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, right? Central nervous system, that's the brain and the spinal cord. That is obviously where the majority of the integration happens. And that's also the, the central command station for all of the uh, things that go on in, in the human body. You also have the peripheral nervous system. And that is the different spinal and cranial nerves that all send messages from the spinal cord and the brain out to the rest of the body. Um, and also think of like in the skeletal system, we talked about the axial and appendicular skeletal systems, right? It's a, not quite lines. It doesn't line up quite exactly, but um, if this helps you think of like the, at least the scale of the breakdown, right? And then we'll see this table. Uh, a few times i'll keep coming back to this this right here the central nervous system right and that functions uh, alongside the peripheral nervous system so that includes the brain and the spinal cord and it also has the integrative and control centers right and that communicates with the peripheral nervous system both directions all right and then we're going to take a look at these other boxes and what they need to be filled up with all right so in the peripheral nervous system you have two different divisions that we're going to talk about. You have the sensory division, that's called the afferent division. And then you have the motor division, which is called the efferent division. Because of how those um, sound, I'm likely to refer to them when I'm just talking, I'm likely to refer to those as the sensory and motor divisions, but you will see afferent and efferent again. All right. Um, so the sensory fibers, the sensory afferent fibers, those carry impulses from the skin, the skeletal muscles and the joints, all the way up to the brain. Then you have the visceral, visceral afferent fibers. Those transmit impulses from the visceral organs to the brain, right? Uh, so you think uh, afferent, that's coming at you. That's coming at your brain, right? So it carries it from the skin, skeletal muscles and joints, uh, or the visceral organs. It carries all that information back to the brain, okay? Then you have the motor divisions, the efferent uh, division. That transmits impulses from the central nervous system down to the effector organs, right? You think of efferent, you can think of, uh, you can think of that as like they're effing off. They're, they're getting away from, from the brain down to the rest of the body. Okay. And so you see the peripheral nervous system has these two different breakouts, right? So the sensory division that communicates back to the peripheral nervous system and then from the nervous system to the, uh, motor division is how that communication flows. All right. Now let's take a look at these last couple of boxes here. So in the motor division, right, you have two different, two main parts of that as well. You have the somatic nervous system, which uh, if you remember soma, uh, if you think like somatic cells, soma comes from, I think it's Greek for body. You'll see that again, even in this unit, you'll see soma again. Um, but you think the somatic nervous system, that's the uh, skeletal muscles that you have voluntary and conscious control over, right? And that's the, that's the first main part of the motor division. And then you have the autonomic nervous system. If you think of what auto means, it means self. Um, maybe think like an automobile is a self mobile vehicle, right? Um, so the autonomic nervous system, which sometimes is abbreviated ANS, but um, don't get that conflated with at the same level as like the, the peripheral nervous system or the central nervous system. All right, make sure you're, you're keeping track of that, okay? This, the autonomic nervous system regulates your smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands, all of the kind of muscles that you don't have direct control over, right? Um, and then the autonomic nervous system, that is divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems, okay? You can see 
the motor division that divides out into the autonomic and somatic nervous system. And then the autonomic nervous system divides out into the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division. And I'll stop moving the mouse for a second so you can, there we go. Uh, and we'll talk more about the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions. Um, but for now, it's fine to know that the sympathetic division that just mobilizes the body systems during activity and the parasympathetic division that conserves energy uh, and it um, promotes like general kind of housekeeping functions during rest, um, things like digestion, that kind of stuff. All right. Now let's take a look at the histology, our favorite stuff here. So we've talked about this a little bit before. There are two principal cell types of the nervous system. And there are neurons, which we've talked about a little bit more. Um, these are cells that are just super excited to meet you uh, and also excitable in their own rights. And they transmit electrical signals uh, down each other through the nervous system. Then basically everything else, there are supporting cells, right? The, the neuroglia. Those are cells that surround and wrap neurons for uh, various different reasons that we'll talk about. And this is where we're actually going to learn about some of these different supporting cells. The first of those supporting cells. Oh, no, not yet. Sorry, my bad. Got excited. Uh, just like the neurons. So the supporting cells, the neuroglia, uh, or the glial cells. If you remember glia, glial, that's, that means glue. So it's kind of the stuff that, that holds everything together in the nervous system, all right? Uh, these supporting cells, they provide a supportive scaffolding. Think scaffolding like in a building uh, when they're making a building. Uh, it'll, that the scaffolding is what kind of holds everything together while they stick um, all the, all the fixings in, all right? Uh, they segregate and isolate neurons, right, which is important. We'll talk about that. Uh, they also guide young neurons to proper connections. They're, uh, they're the Jedi masters to the, uh, the neural Padawans, all right? Uh, just guiding them and, and hoping that they become master Jedi themselves someday. Uh, they also promote health and growth throughout the nervous system. Here we go. Now we're going to talk about these. All right, so the first kind of supporting cell within the nervous system is the astrocyte. Um, astro, if you think about, like, it, it means what you think it does. Like, astro talks about stars, all right? So this is a star-shaped um, cell in the nervous system. These are really abundant. There's a lot of them. And they have a lot of different purposes. They're really branched. They cling all over neurons and the different endings. They cover capillaries. Uh, the main things that they do is they support and brace neurons, like I said, the, the neuroglia is in glia is in glue, uh, really huge supporting role here. Uh, they also anchor neurons to their nutrient supplies. Neurons are really, um, they can, they consume a lot of energy. Uh, so they, they need to be connected up to, to nutrient supplies at all times. Um, they also guide that migration of young neurons into place and they control the chemical environment, which as we'll talk about, uh, probably not this lecture, but soon, uh, the chemical environment that these all exist in is very important. And then you can see a picture. You can see that uh, personally, the image it evokes is not a, of a star, but you could see how someone that was first looking at this, like, oh, it's kind of star-shaped, all right. Okay, so that's that's what we're looking at here. See, this is the astrocyte. You see that it connects all to these capillaries, and then you have this big old neuron in the back here that it's latched onto as well, Okay. And that's, it just uh, acts as a, a big piece of glue or a piece of gum in a, in a car engine that uh, just the owner just does not want to bring it to the shop, right? We have a couple other things here. Uh, we have the microglia, which micro is in tiny, right? Small, the small glue here. These are small cells and they have a bunch of spiny processes on them. Uh, these are uh, phagocytes, which phago, remember, means eat, site, cell. Uh, so these eat other cells, and they monitor the health of the neurons. All right. Uh, we also have ependymal cells. Okay, ependymal cells. These range in shape. These, uh, these kind of look like the, uh, the epithelial cells of the uh, nervous system, right? So they range in shape. They have squamous and columnar cells. Uh, they line the central cavities of the brain and the spinal column. All right, so if we take a look here, see the microglial cell, you can see it's a lot smaller than the, uh, uh, the neuron that it's surrounding, right? Uh, then you also have the ependymal cell, which you can see it kind of has a lot of that, like we see like little cilia here, just like we did with some of the uh, ciliated epithelial tissue, right? 
when you see that covers the brain or spinal cord tissue. Okay, let me, there you go. Let's take a look. So we have oligodendrocytes. Those are branch cells. Think dendro, right? Is in the tree branching, right? Uh, oligodendrocytes, those are branch cells that wrap the CNS nerve fibers, okay? The central nervous system. This is what uh, wraps those up. Then you have Schwann cells. Uh, those surround fibers of the peripheral nervous system. Uh, you may also see, probably not for me, I, like, I know them as Schwann, so, Schwann cells, um, but you may hear uh, neurolemocytes someplace else, but that, those refer to the same thing. Uh, I don't know if is I don't know if the Schwann man is a thing down here, but like the yellow truck that I would sell like frozen foods and stuff. That's what I think of when I think of the Schwann cells. Uh, you also have satellite cells that surround neuron cell bodies with uh, ganglia. And we'll talk about these as well. So you can see here this myelin sheath, which uh, I think it's the next slide or a couple slides after that. Um, that's part of the oligodendrocytes job. And then you see here there are also there's also myelin sheath. Uh, that's from the Schwann cells, right? Uh, you can see the satellite cells uh, covering the cell body of the neuron. Okay. And we'll talk about more of these kind of shapes and stuff. We'll talk about that as well. So neurons, these are the, the main things that we're concerned about, right? We talked about this in the histology unit a little bit, but uh, now we're going to really get into them. So neurons, also known as nerve cells, these are the structural units of the nervous system. Okay, these are the main thing that build up the nervous system. Without these, the nervous system is uh, just a bunch of glue hanging out, not really gluing anything in particular together. Um, but these, the main parts of these that we're concerned with is the body, the axon, and the dendrites. Okay. They have a, a very long life. They're generally amitotic, which amitotic, you think a meaning not, and mitotic, uh, think mitosis. So they don't go through mitosis, um, which as you should remember from biology, uh, cue the laughter. Um, a mitosis is the, the cell reproduction cycle, right? Uh, they also have a very high metabolic rate, which is what we were talking about earlier, why the astrocytes need to cling to the capillaries so that they can make sure that that high metabolic rate is able to be maintained, right? Um, the plasma membrane of the neurons, they have functions in electrical signaling and then cell to cell signaling during development. All right, so you see here, this is just the general shape of the neuron. And we'll talk more about some of these specific parts uh, over the next few slides here. But just so you can see what it looks like. All right. Let's talk about this. So you have the nerve cell body. It's the perikaryon you might hear, or the soma, which remember I said the soma, you would hear that again. Soma is in body. So body, body, just translates. And then perikaryon, peri, we know that means around or to surround. Carry, some of you may uh, only vaguely remember. If you think eukaryote or prokaryote, uh, carry means, it really means like a like nut. Um, or acorn, but in biology, that generally refers to the nucleus. So this is the part that's around the nucleus on a nerve cell, okay? So that contains the nucleus and a nucleolus, right? It's the major biosynthetic center. That's where it creates all of the uh, products that uh, life requires, right? That's also where the uh, neuronal processes, which we'll talk about, uh, that's where they kind of start from. That's the focal point for all of those, okay? Yeah. And then if you remember centrioles in, in, the, uh, in the general body cell, uh, that's a, that has a huge part in mitosis, but these don't have centrioles and uh, the nerve cells, they don't go through mitosis, so that works out pretty well, okay? Uh, also has these well-developed nissel bodies. That's the, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, okay? Uh, the nerve cell body also has an axon hillock, okay? And that's the cone-shaped area uh, where axons come out of, like where those start to be created. All right, so then there are a few processes that come from the soma, the body of the cell, right? Processes uh, just means like the arm-like extensions, right? They just extend out from the soma. In the CNS, they're called tracks, and in the PNS, they're called nerves. 
you have two main types of processes. All right, you have axons and dendrites. So let's talk about those. So dendrites, those are short and tapering, as in like they get smaller as they uh, get to their end. And they're also diffuse. They're, they're really spread out. They're really highly branched. Would you think dendrite? We thought we talked about dendra earlier, meaning tree or bush. And same idea here. It's very highly branched, right? Uh, they are receptive or input regions of the neuron. This is where the information gets transmitted to them, to the rest of the uh, neuron and gets sent along the line. So electrical signals here are conveyed as graded potentials as opposed to action potentials, which that should mean um, mean a little bit more to you as we get through this unit. Right? Maybe not even in this lecture, that probably won't still make full sense, but it should um, hopefully over the next couple of lectures. Then you have axons. Those are the other kind of processes, right? These are slender processes and they're uniform diameter, whereas the um, dendrites are tapered. These have a uniform diameter. Um, they run all the way down, right? The long axons, those are called nerve fibers. Usually there's only one unbranched axon per neuron. You'll pretty much just see the one axon, right? Uh, if you see a, like a few branches of it, those are called axon collaterals, um, but you'll generally only see one axon per neuron. The axonal terminal, and that's the branch terminus of an axon. At the end of it, you'll see where it all kind of splits out. I think I have the image next. Oh, nope, one more. Uh, the function of the axons is to generate and transmit action potentials, all right? That's the, the main signal that runs along these uh, uh, neurons, all right? At the axon terminal, they secrete neurotransmitters, which you can think just for right now, neuro is in the nervous system, transmitters, uh, you know, to transmit information. And then along these axons, movement can occur in one of two ways. Anterograde, it means towards the axon terminal, or retrograde, meaning away from the ax axonal terminal. Antero, think anterior, right? The front towards the, the uh, I get, you could think of it as the front of the axon. And the retrograde, retro is in behind, uh, like think like a retro fashion is something from the past, right? Uh, and that's moving back away from the axonal terminal, right? So let's take a look here. So here we have the body, right? And the pericary, right? It's the nucleus, it surrounds the nucleus here. Um, also known as the soma. And you see you have these dendrites. You can see how they kind of look like trees, right? Uh, those all branch off of here. And then you have a single axon coming down here, right? Uh, on the axon hillock which just is kind of a uh, spot here that the axon eventually comes out of, okay? Then the axon terminals, and these are the secretory component. They secrete the neurotransmitters, right? Um, you think that you have another uh, neuron down here, and that would latch on to the dendrite, okay? Um, let's see, I think that's everything that we've talked about so far. Yeah. All right, let's take a look here at the myelin sheath. That is this part here, all of these. These are all the myelin sheath, okay? We would call this myelinated. So the myelin sheath is a whitish and fatty uh, sheath, and it's protein and lipid, uh, made up of proteins and lipids. Uh, it's a sheath that around, it's around most long axons, okay? Uh, you can think of this as kind of like, instead of just having, uh, like your, even like your earbuds, uh, or I guess your headphones. Uh, it has, if you have it corded still, if you're like me and you still have a corded set of headphones, um, you will you know that there's like the, the cable inside that uh, rubber rubberized plastic sheath, right? Uh, same kind of thing here. This just acts to insulate it. It protects the axon from damage uh, and also electrically insulates fibers from one another so that like uh, you don't cross your wires or anything. Um, it also increases the speed of nerve impulse transmission. Okay, so you can think of just like a, a insulation surrounding any kind of uh, power cable or anything like that. All right, instead of just having cables out in out in the open, they're generally covered. Right. So you've got the myelin sheath uh, that's formed by Schwann cells in the PNS. Right. 
It's the peripheral nervous system. Remember, the peripheral nervous system has uh, Schwann cells that form it. Uh, the way that they work is they envelop an axon in a trough. Okay, then it encloses it within with its own plasma membrane, and then it creates concentric layers of a membrane uh, to make up that myelin sheath. All right. Uh, the neurolemma, that's the remaining nucleus and cytoplasm of a Schwann cell that's kind of on the outside, which I think, yep, here's a picture. You can see it starts enclosing it in just a little trough here, right? Uh, and it starts wrapping around, wrapping around. Before you know it, you got a, you got a tasty cinnamon bun of myelin sheath, right? Uh, and that's what it's talking about, the neurolemma. That's this last part here that has the, the nucleus and all of that. All right. And that just wraps us up just like you would see. Um, uh, <laughs> I guess not exactly how, how we do electrical cords. There isn't just an automatic cell that wraps up electrical cords, but you get my point. Okay. Then you have the nodes of Ranvier, uh, which is generally, I've talked about how I generally prefer the, the name of something that like represents something about itself. That's not just named after a guy, but this just, it's just a fantastic name. It sounds like some kind of thing that like a like a group of vikings would attack the nodes of ranvier uh which is just just fantastic um you may also see it as neurofibril nodes but um uh, only only big old dorks are going to call it that uh, the cool kids all call it the nodes of ranvier um these are the gaps in the myelin sheath between adjacent schwann cells right you'll see these little gaps between them uh, and then these are where axon collaterals can emerge like where there's multiple axons uh, do I have a picture next? Let me go back just to make sure we all see what I'm talking about here. So that these right here, these spaces in between, these are each a different node of Ranvier, right? And it is Ranvier because the dude was French. Uh, he's a French histolo histologist? Histologist, I think. Um, let's see. All right. So then unmyelinated axons. You do have some axons that go unmyelinated. Uh, so a Schwann cell surrounds nerve fibers. Uh, like the Schwann cells are still there, but they don't do that coiling. They don't do the, the cinnamon bun move on it, right? And they, they just kind of partially enclose. They can do it on a, across a bunch of different axons, all right? Uh, so they're not necessarily uh, myelinating, which this is the actual myelin sheath part, but they're just kind of enclosing uh, around a bunch of axons before they actually get to the myelination part of it, okay? Um, that. In the CNS, uh, you have both myelinated and unmyelinated fibers. Okay, uh, obviously, myelinated is uh, fibers with myelination. Unmyelinated is those that are not myelinated, right? Um, and in the CNS, you have the oligodendrocytes. Those are what actually form the myelin sheaths. Okay, uh, you have the nodes of Ranvier. They're really widely spaced here. Okay, uh, and there isn't any neural lemma. Okay. So those are the main differences there between the CNS and the PNS uh, myelination. So interesting uh, about myelination is in the brain, you can actually differentiate between the regions that have uh, a lot of myelinated fibers and the regions that have uh, unmyelinated fibers, the white matter, right? That's the dense collection of myelinated fibers. Then you have gray matter. That's mostly the soma and unmyelinated fibers. So I think you can see, yeah, you can see the white matter here versus the gray matter, right? And same thing here. You can see the white matter versus the gray matter. Okay. Just a, just an interesting thing to point out. Think about that for a second. Like what, what the benefits of having regions that are myelinated versus unmyelinated, what would the, what would the benefits be there? Let's think about that for a second. Cause that's going to, that, that's obviously going to come up at some point in the future. Okay, and so we have a few different classifications of these neurons. Okay. The uh, main way that we're gonna talk about it is the structural differences. You have multipolar, those have three or more processes coming off of the, uh, the neural body. You have bipolar, so bi and then polar. Polar is an ends, so multipolar has a bunch of different ends. Bipolar has two different ends. Uh, it's two processes. You have an axon and a dendrite that come out of it. And then unipolar, one pole, one end. That's a single short process. All right. So let's take a look at some of these pictures here. So you got multipolar. You see the body, the cell body here has all these different dendrites coming off of it. And then this long axon. 
right? Then bipolar, you have the cell body in the middle. Uh, and then coming off of that, you have the dendrite, which branches off here. And then you have the axon, which branches off. That just has the two different ends, right? And then you have the unipolar uh, or pseudo unipolar. Um, pseudo, remember, means uh, like fake. Right? So it's not really one direction, but um, a lot. You'll generally see unipolar. Uh, but it has a cell body that kind of branches off the main uh, branch here. And it has the receptive endings and then the um, secretory endings here. But it's all considered just the axon, right? So that's, that's what it means by unipolar there. We can see here, uh, this looks like it just has a really fun hairdo going on, which, you know, I'm all about that. Um, that's multipolar, obviously has a bunch of different ends coming off of it. Bipolar, you can see the same kind of thing here, right? Uh, where the cell body's in the middle and it goes off one direction, two direction. Whereas here, it pretty much just goes the one, uh, one direction here. All right. And this is going to be important to know too. So the multipolar, that's generally the, the most abundant that you'll find anywhere in the body. And that's the major neuron type in the central nervous system. All right. Uh, bipolar, that's not very common at all. Uh, it's found in some special sensory organs, the olfactory mucosa, which we'll talk about that uh, later. The olfactory meaning smell, mucosa, the, the mucosal tissue. All right. And you have in the eye and the ear, you'll see these. Uh, and then unipolar. That's mainly in the peripheral nervous system. Um, we'll probably talk a little bit more about some of these ganglia, all right? You also have a functional classification. Remember, that was structural classification of neurons. The functional classification, you have sensory or afferent, remember, uh, coming at you. Uh, that transmits impulses toward the CNS, toward your brain, at your brain. The motor efferent, that carries impulses away from the central nervous system. You have a third one, inner neurons, also known as association neurons, and that shuttles signals through the CNS pathways. And we'll probably talk about that a little bit more as well. So just a couple of things to, this, this should be the last stuff here. So uh, thank you for, for bearing through this. You have neurophysiology. Neurons are extremely irritable as they are excitable, okay? Uh, and then action potentials, which we talked about graded potentials earlier, but the action potential is the important part that we're going to really get into this unit. Uh, those are also known as nerve impulses, but I'll try to use action potentials um, as, as much as I can because that's the, the true term that we want to use. Those are electrical impulses that are carried along the length of axons, all right? Uh, they are the same regardless of stimulus, kind of an all or nothing kind of situation here as well. So uh, they run the same throughout the entire length, right? And they are, an underlying, they are the underlying functional feature of the nervous system. That's what makes everything actually work in the nervous system, all right? That is everything for now, okay? Uh, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.